Hi guys, it's your science teacher here with a video. This time it's all on P5 uh, electricity inside the home. This topic looks at how we make electrical appliances safe, as well as looking at how we get our mains electricity, uh, the role of step up and step down transformers, and looking at the frequency and voltage mains electricity is supplied at. Remember, I also make resources for my channel, especially revision maps. They are really, really useful for these videos in revising for your GCSEs. So please check them out in the description below. There are two sources of electricity in your home. You have um, the mains electricity, which is known as alternating current. Um, and you also have uh, batteries, which is known as direct current. Uh, and you've probably seen them written as AC and DC, not the band AC, DC, but the type of current you're going to be using. Um, and they have advantages and disadvantages, both of them. Um, alternating current, the reason why we use that for mains electricity is because of the fact uh, we can change the voltage of it quite easily and we use step up and step down transformers uh, in order to change uh, the voltage <clears throat> because uh, when uh, you are uh, from a power station you're generating this electricity um, you're wanting it to go uh, very far so uh, to when you step up the current uh, then it can travel further with less resistance um, and you want to step down the current to make it safe uh, to be able to use in homes. Um, and alternating current um, also uh, usually comes out at 230 volts from uh, our mains electricity cords and is at a frequency of 50 hertz. And we'll look about what I mean by that now. Uh, alternating current is changing direction all the time. It changes directions 50 times each second. That's where that 50 comes. So it goes uh, in one direction and then the other, almost like a wave kind of uh, forming. And um, you, you can see that it goes from plus 230 volts to negative 230 volts. Um, and you can measure this and see this pattern under what is called an oscilloscope. Uh, you'll have probably looked at one of them uh, in your labs at school. Now, I said alternating current is more advantageous uh, usually than direct current. That's why we use our mains electricity uh, for a lot of things. However, sometimes we do use direct current uh, in battery operated products. Um, and direct current is advantageous uh, when you're looking at low voltage uh, appliances. Um, so things uh, such as your TV remote, you wouldn't want to have to plug that into the mains electricity all the time. Uh, you can make them often a lot more portable uh, by using battery operated. And how that looks on an oscilloscope is often quite different. Um, now, you don't get as high a voltage often. Uh, we have lots of batteries which are about 1.5 volts and... Um, it would just be a straight flat line. The current is not alternating. It's not changing direction. And the height that it goes up uh, will be the, the voltage. Um, now, you can make alternating current into direct current, but you need to be able to use a diode into your circuit, uh, and that will mean that it can only flow in one direction. Because uh, we use large voltages when we work with mains electricity, we need a plug uh, that can be fit to the task um, and uh, it works by three main wires. We've got the brown wire over here, which is known as our live uh, wire. We have our yellow and green wire, which is known as the earth wire. And we have our blue wire, which is known as the neutral wire. Um, and most of the time, only the neutral wire and the live wire are the two wires that are doing most of the work. Um, the earth wire and the fuse that are inside the battery, they are only used for safety purposes. This is here is a fuse, and it, you can see on this one, it's, it's also got a number, which is 13 amps, and we'll talk about that as well. So why do we have this earth wire and this fuse if the neutral wire and the live wire are the two wires that are mainly going to be doing the work? 
Well, if the live wire comes loose and it touches the metal case of an appliance, it could cause you an electric shock. However, what happens is the current becomes so big um, when it touches a, a metal case that it goes through the fuse and hopefully blows it because the fuse has a thin wire running through it and it, it has a really low resistance so it will break okay if that current gets above 13 amps okay then it's going to break now a 13 amp uh, fuse would probably be used for something between the ranges of uh, 7 to 12 amps okay you're probably going to use it for an appliance which requires about a current like that because then it, if it gets any higher than that it will blow the fuse now if the fuse isn't working and um, then that's where the earth wire comes in so it's a backup to the fuse basically and the earth wire grounds the electricity so it goes through all your um, uh, wiring in your house and finds a, uh, a place to dig into the earth and it will earth the appliance and that, that wire has uh, less resistance than your body, so that's where it's going to get favoured to go down. Uh, so hopefully you do not get an electric shock. Often on appliances, uh, it has a power rating on it. Um, and power is the amount of energy uh, transferred per second. Um, and um, it's measured in a unit called uh, watts. Um, and from that definition, you can probably create your own little triangle from that definition. So power is energy divided by time, uh, where energy is measured, obviously, in joules. Time is measured, obviously, in seconds and power is measured in watts. For example, if a radio is a 50 watt radio, it's transferring 50 joules of energy in a second. Now, often you're not given in an exam question the energy and time. Often you're given uh, the fact that power equals voltage times current. Uh, so often you're given a voltage and a current uh, for a circuit and you have to calculate the power from that. And sometimes if they're being really sneaky, uh, sometimes they will actually want you to apply Ohm's law and get resistance in there as well because you know that the resistance equals voltage divided by current. Uh, for Ohm's law, so you can sub in resistance into your equation as voltage equals resistance times current. You can just take out voltage from your equation and sub it in by doing uh, power equals resistance times I, which is already there, and then times this I, so you can say I squared. And you can, you, you can work out now power using resistance and current now, energy companies often use kilowatt hours in order to work out how much to charge you for your electricity. Um, and they will often give you a price for kilowatt hours and they could say that one kilowatt hour equals uh, 26 pence. You can work out how much energy you are going to be using because uh, on the appliance it will tell you the power output of it. So this could be a 100 watt. Uh, light basically and if you were to leave on a 100 watt light for 10 hours that would give you one kilowatt hour okay um, and the way I work that out is just by times in 100 by 10 and that gives you one kilowatt because uh, a kilowatt means a thousand watts equals one kilowatt <clears throat> So it would take me uh, 10 hours and I would pay 26p for that. But not everything has the same uh, power output in your house. For example, if you were in a shower, uh, that might have a power output of 2000 uh, watts. And basically that would mean that you'd only need to be in that shower for 30 mins. Uh, to use up one kilowatt hour. So, so 30 mins of shower would cost you 26p, whereas keeping the light bulb on for 10 hours costs you the same. Now, I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you liked the video, please drop it a like and uh, also subscribe to my channel uh, to see related content.